that it would be for home, you would be capped at the home improvement loan amount, which is 2.5 million. Oh. So, you know, different, different, different. <laughs> we take each case on its own merits right. and, 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 and we assist. Okay. So once they come in and they explain the situation that they are in, you will provide the necessary guidance. That's correct, yes. All right, so another question on the point system, and I think this is the last question on the point system. Can the points be transferred? So I already have a house, and I am not interested in buying another house, but I have been um, contributing to the NHT. I have my little sister now who just turned 20, and she's interested in buying a property. Can I give my sister my points? You, so parents can pass on points to children. Uh huh. But as we are now, brother can't pass. <laughs> Whoops. Is it my internet? Someone's internet. All right, so you are saying that I can't pass on to my sister. No, but you and your sister, any two individuals can co-apply to, to, to purchase a, a property. But as it relates to transferring points only at the moment, and let me say that we are an evolving institution. We never started out with all these policies and grants and benefits okay. that we are at today. But as of today, when I speak with you, only mm -hmm. parents can pass on points to children mm -hmm. on the parent this program. Um, but any two individuals can always co-apply. They don't have to necessarily be blood relative. But um, of course, you have to make sure who you're getting involved with because true. it's not a financial and economic decision. It's a legal decision as well. And you want to ensure that you do your due diligence before you undertake any such kind of arrangement. Right, that's true. So you just mentioned, you said any two? So three Any two individuals can co Only two? Only two? Pardon? Only two, not only, three? Only two under the joint finance mortgage program, more than two can um, pool resources to buy a property, but mm -hmm. only two can use their NHD benefit. Oh, okay. So more than right. two can, but only two right. can use their NHD if you're using the joint finance, which is through your partners. Right. So then you, because at that point it's more so the, the loan, the loan underwriting terms for that pan institution that governs the arrangement, the NHD only verifies your qualification and say yes, but on any, 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 let me try and use a legal term, any security that the <laughs> NHD is standing on, only two um, NHD mortgages can use their benefit for that. Okay. All right. So for my next question, you would have answered some aspect of it as it relates to interest rates. Right. Can you explain a little bit more on your interest rate? I think you're now 4% as, as your highest? 4% at the highest for persons mm -hmm. who earn 42,001 and above. The income band below that, which is persons who earn between thirty thousand and one and forty-two thousand dollars per week, mm -hmm. those individuals will pay their mortgages at two percent, and the other income bands, which is um, fifteen thousand and one to thirty thousand and between minimum wage and fifteen thousand per week, mm -hmm. those individuals will pay their loans at an interest rate of zero percent, and zero. That, that's. That's significant. I think you need to say that again. The zero percent one, especially, yes. Zero. And there actually, when zero percent. When you look at um, our interest rate structure, Sharika, and we look at the other variables that I spoke about. Mm -hmm. If you're a public sector worker, you get a one percent discount. If you're a person with a disability, you get a two percent discount. Mm -hmm. If you are fifty-five and over, you get a two percent discount. Mm -hmm. When you look at all of that, if I should pull up yes. the NHD's interest rate structure, mm -hmm. bearing in mind all of those right. calculations and variables. What you realize is majority of our mortgages get an Lower interest than, rate yes. of zero. Yes. Zero, not even, so, very few people end up at four. 
That's majority what I'm about, of the I was about to say. Yes. There's, there are built-in mechanisms, what we uh -huh. like to call enablers, because we understand that um, it's, 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 there are different parts of the pie. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I know many times persons look at the, the loan limit and say 6.5, that's all I am giving. Really? <laughs> what what 6.5 can do NHD? And I make a point where that is concerned. The NHD's loan limit is 6.5 for a very good reason. Because if tomorrow the NHD decides that it's going to increase its loan limit from 6.5 to even 7.5, what we find happen every time that the NHD adjusts its loan limit is that the prices of housing go up. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful that we're not giving to you with one hand in terms of a higher loan limit. Taking it back. And the market takes it away back mm -hmm. with higher prices. And so I know we get a little beat up sometimes for that to say 6.5 can do nothing. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it's 6.5 for a very good reason. Because if we start, um, if we adjust that 6.5 upward, you think you think house price is bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would only get worse. But it was, so we, it, sorry. So we're not, we're not a regulator mm -hmm. in that NHG doesn't regulate the housing market. But what the NHG understands is that it impacts it. And many, 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 Many of the players in the market look at what the NHG does and adjust themselves accordingly. Mm -hmm. So the, the challenge we're having now as it relates to, to an extent, different factors come into play, but the challenge mm -hmm. that we're having, part of the challenge we're having as it relates to prices is because of the adjustments that have been made in interest rates and, mm -hmm. and, and loan limits that banks are willing to lend more at cheaper rates. If we were having this conversation perhaps 10 years ago, we wouldn't be talking about interest rates as low as 4% in the case right. of NHD. And if you look across the, the, the mortgage market, interest rates average at about 7.5%. Seven, right, up to 8. Right. Eight. Right. Yeah, 7 to 8. I mean, if you should average them, we'd probably drop somewhere in the middle of 7.5%. Right. 10 years ago, we were talking about interest rates as high as 21, 23, yes. 25%. <laughs> so, because there's no more financing or the financing arrangements as it relates to housing are better, mm -hmm. vendors have been pushing the envelope because they say, oh, uh, NHD of Millennium more, NHD has moved from 4.5 to 5.5 mm -hmm. 5 to 6.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. NHD has moved interest rates from as high as 9% down to 4% in the last few years. The banks as well have come down to 7% and in some okay. instances at 6.9, maybe in the market run about now. So vendors in the market understand that hey, mm -hmm. more persons can afford They'll a mortgage. Be buying. Yes. So my $10 million property, I can push it to 13. I yeah. can push it to 14. I can push it to 15. Mm -hmm. And remember that D word, that demand. Yes we spoke about as well that it allows them to do that because me and you probably can't afford it at whatever price they're saying but trust me somebody else is going to be somebody able to. else yes. yes somebody else is going to be able to so the nht's loan limit i know a sore point for some mm -hmm. but it's a method of balancing the activities in the 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 the, 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 the housing market so we're not giving with you giving to you with one hand and then you're yeah. ended up losing it on the other hand because prices keep moving outside of your reach. Okay. All right. So I, I am happy to, and as I, I am still stuck at the 0%. <laughs> <laughs> so for persons you know, out there who are earning minimum wage and, you know, they are kind of, you know, a little bit depressed because, you know, your salary is not where you would really want it to be. And you're looking at the housing market and you're saying, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. You can. So go you into can. the NHT, have a sit down, talk with someone, and they will help you. They will provide you with guidance. You can get a 0% <laughs> interest can, can I make it a little mortgage. better? Can I make it a little better for, 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 yes. for, for those persons? The NHT also has a home grant of $2.5 million. Free money. 
free money. A grant you don't have to repay. Again, for individuals at that lower end of the market that earn between minimum wage and $15,000 per week, mm -hmm. you've been contributing to the NHD for at least seven years, you get a home grant mm -hmm. of $2.5 million. So that's a 0% interest rate. So you only and pay a zero percent more. what you are borrowing. 0%. So the next time, Sharika, you hear you hear you hear that NHG don't help poor people. Please help me correct. Yes, I most definitely <laughs> please will. Help me correct. Today. Most definitely will because what I have been learning on my journey is that never say never. Go in and have a conversation with someone who yes. is familiar with the process. Go to the NHG. Let them know your situation that you are in. You probably can't buy the house this year. But you could possibly uh, buy the house in two years. So when you go yeah. in and you sit down and you have the conversation, no, they will provide you with the map. So you know, all right, in the next year or the next two years, this is what I have to do to ensure that in the next two years, we can buy a house. It requires research, it requires planning, and it requires commitment. Once you have those three variables, that's it. Stop not going to happen for you. That's Trust me. I so for Trust the persons me. who are watching, don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to your own negative mind because sometimes we can be our own worst critic, you know. Yes. You look at the little pay slip and then you just get demotivated. But don't be demotivated. Go into the NHT, carry the pay slip, show it to them, explain mm -hmm. to them and let them help you with the process and let them help you with what you need to do to Ensure you can get the home zero percent plus a 2.5 million dollar free money house grant. Come on, man! Come on, man! You know that here on Josh Rica, we preach real estate and wanting to acquire your own home because that's one of the biggest achievements we can ever have in this lifetime acquiring a property <laughs> with our name on it. Yeah, and it opens you to so much more. I mean, your name being on a title, it means you're able to borrow against that. You can send the children to school against that. You can finish your own education against that. It's it's the security, it's the independence, it's the <laughs> peace of mind. It's how we build generational wealth that if every time we're starting over, because mommy or daddy never left anything behind, we'll never advance to anywhere. Right. But if it is that you're if, if it is that with each generation, there's something left behind for them mm -hmm. to build on. It may not be the house. It may not be, it may be just the land alone. And the land is fine. <laughs> and the land is fine. The land is good. Real the estate is, appreciates in exactly. value. Exactly. There's fine. something called land you know? banking. You can yes. save your money in land. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so don't think any investment in housing is too small. If it is a one bedroom you can buy, if that's I what you start with, you it cannot buy it. If it's mm -hmm. a studio, buy it. If it's land alone, but you can't lose. You cannot lose. You can't lose. You and can't I think lose. with a lot of re, um, young people, Mr. Burbick, I think a lot of, I myself is cool. And it, <laughs> you know, when you just start working and, you know, one of the first things most of us go buy. Car, ah. car. <laughs> we have to spend, yeah. spend, spend money on. Yes. yes. Those of you young persons watching the video, we're not saying don't go buy a car, you know. But mm -hmm. being of the know that a car is a liability, a house yes. or a piece of land is an asset. Mm -hmm. The car will get cheaper every day, but the value in your house and your land will appreciate. I've never Always heard about any up. land depreciate yet. Never. <laughs> never. No. Even no. if it's in a ghetto, the price going up on it. Yes. So ensure <laughs> that you do the right thing. Get a piece of land, get your name on the title, go into the NHT. As Mr. Burby could have said, you have one of the best customer service. He said it himself, you know, he's bragging on his team. So put his word to the test. Go into the NHT if I can't go in yet because we know it's COVID. Take up your phone and call, and they will. We're on all socials. And you're on social media, so you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram. So you have no excuse not to do what you need to do to ensure that you acquire the property that you need to get. Yes.
All right. So we're done preaching. We're going to move on <laughs> <laughs> to the next question. So we hope that one get to the persons out there who are watching. So you, we were speaking about land. Yes. So now I'm going to speak a little more about land loan because I know you offer land loans. So for persons who are not wanting to buy a house, but they want to buy a piece of land, how do they go about acquiring a land loan from the NHD? Well, the, it's the same interest rate structure that would apply. So right. based on where your income is, uh, we assign that interest rate to you, whether it's buying land or a house, it would be the same applicable interest rate. And the maximum amount the NHG lends for land purchase now is $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get $2.5 million to purchase a piece of land. And actually, you, you get to break out your $6.5 million um, loan limit now in two parts where you can get 2.5 million for the purchase of the land and 4 million to do construction. Okay. And I know sometimes persons, we, we, we get, we don't, I know a lot of persons don't like buy land and build, but trust me, it's cheaper. It is. What you can get with 6.5 million to buy a piece of land and build Mm -hmm. It's far more than what you would say try to get with 6.5 million. And it's not just 6.5, the same is applicable for 8 or 9 mm -hmm. or 10 million or whatever the amount is. So I know sometimes persons don't like the construction process right. and they would rather just buy something ready made mm -hmm. that they see out of the open market. But don't knock it. Think about it. Do your research and you probably will be able to better stretch. That, mm -hmm. that 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 mortgage um whether or that loan amount rather mm -hmm. if you're doing purchasing a land and building than if you're going mm -hmm. out there to, to 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 buy only and the other variable too sharika is that in jamaica we have these pieces of land that pass down from great grandfather Father. to grandfather yeah. to, and nobody now do not know it is you know, so we have these intergenerational lands that just been mm -hmm. passing down passing down passing down you know, stop the passing down and capitalize and mm -hmm. change that from just undeveloped idle land into housing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the NHD allows once there's a registered title in place, you don't have to be the title holder. Title can be in a grandpa name, can be in a the father name. Once the title holder can 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 put in writing that, hey, I'm giving you legal permission to build on this piece of land, the yeah. NHC will secure your $6.5 million mortgage to do that. So you can go straight to mm -hmm. construction immediately. And if you if there's no registered um, title for the piece of land, still come in and talk to us. Mm -hmm. NHD has facilities in place that will help you to move it from unregistered to registered land as well. And if you need financing to do that process, the NHD again will assist what? you in terms of prof yes, <laughs> we have a very good relationship with LAMP. And NLA will assist you with the registration process as well. But mm -hmm. far, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head sometimes. We don't look at the options sometimes because we don't do re the research. We just see the new apartment going up. We see the new house. And you going want up. it. We, see the, we want that. We see the price and we say we can't afford it. And we throw right. our hands in the air and say, hey, nobody can help me. No, there are other avenues that you can pursue. I want to touch on another one real quick our cluster housing program. Mm -hmm. So each individual contributor to the NHD is eligible to get a loan of $6.5 million. But the NHD allows a minimum of three persons, upward to a maximum of 18 persons, mm -hmm. to pool their NHD benefit together and undertake them own little project. So me, Sharika, you, mm -hmm. and the sister that they say in the market right. want to do something, Three are we all right? 6.5. Me alone can't undertake it. I can't, I, I don't see anything I can buy. Mm -hmm. Sherry and I are friends, we're co-workers, we are whatever. Mm -hmm. And her sister, I know who's also interested. So we pulled the 6.5, 6.5, 6.5. My math isn't great, but I think that comes out to about 19.5. Somewhere and, there. Yeah. And we're able now to go out and look for a piece of land, mm -hmm. buy it. Mm -hmm. Subdivide it. So mm -hmm. me get my piece. Sharika get her piece. Her sister get her piece. We partition it. We can put our own, you know, separate ourselves. Yes, yes. 
And thereafter, we can hire either one contractor, one architect, one set of service providers who's, who's mm -hmm. going to do everything for us. Or Sharika wants a three bedroom. I just want a one bedroom. Our sister wants a two story, whatever. She has a different housing plan. Mm -hmm. Having divided the land, we can go our individual ways and do our individual construction. So it's called the NHC's cluster housing program. So a minimum of three lots, maximum of nine. The piece of land, you can go and buy the land and subdivide it in a minimum of three, maximum of nine. I will stop at nine because legally after nine, you're no longer a cluster. You're now in a big people category. <laughs> so we stop at nine. And on each lot, you can have two mortgages. So you can have up to 18 persons oh. who, who can develop those nine lots using their six, I mean, 6.5 6 times 18. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. So everybody and the NHT, as I mentioned, you can break out your loan limit. So you can break out the NHT will make available 2.5 Mm -hmm. to each individual to go towards the purchase of the land and to put in the infrastructure and mm -hmm. each individual have their remaining four million that they can use for construction so the housing market i understand is is not where many of us would like it to be okay. which it which means it requires a different thought process a different kind of innovation mm -hmm. and a different approach to the market and that's why nhd brought in that cluster program which is a different approach one person we understand can't go it alone necessarily but pool your resources in a small yeah, space with other persons subdivide it mm. be your own integrated community Build out your own little plot that all of you um, um, have, have, have invested in. And, and that's, that's priceless yes. to be able to choose who your neighbors are, to be able to choose where exactly you want how to you live, want your development, how you want your development yes. to look. You set your own rules in there. You there put you in go. place your own security arrangements. And over you time, go. you, as a small little close-knitted group, make that space how you want it to be. That's that. Mm -mm. That's priceless. That's priceless. That's truly priceless. On that, though, Mr. Burbick, is there a cap as it relates to the amount of money that persons have to spend there? Because I know you said... um um. A max of 18 persons, correct? Yes. Yes. Is there a ceiling in terms of monetary value that the cluster housing program allows persons? So if I see like a I don't know if this figure would write a 50 million dollar and the 18 of us come together, can afford it. Mm -hmm. Is there a cap to say, all right, you can't pass 30? Remember your building. Yeah? Remember your building. So and you're breaking out the 6.5 in two. Mm -hmm. So remember, each person gets 2.5. So if it's 10 persons, you know mm -hmm. you have 25 million to buy the land. Right. And to put in the infrastructure. And then you will have the remaining 4 million each multiplied by 10 persons again. So you know you have 40 million to do so the building. Right. So the only the only cap we have is is how you you can you can break out at 6.5 oh. that is 2.5 for the land and four for the, the the construction and we do it that way because we don't want you to spend all the, the in this case 65 million you spend 50 million and, buying buying the land. Land. <laughs> and then no money to buy the land <laughs> all 10 of the stand up and look for the piece of land because i can't be <laughs> right yeah, so right. we want to ensure that you know when the NHD um, says you you finish the 6.5, that there's a structure that's habitable, that even if it's not complete, it's something you can move in mm -hmm. and you can go on living in the meanwhile until you, you know, more financing become available. Or you can always pool that with additional financing from elsewhere mm -hmm. and to do your, 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 your construction till you get to where you want to. So even with the cluster program, I can still access financing from your partners? You, you, we will allow you to exhaust the NHD portion first. Uh -huh. um, if your housing plan says you require X amount more based on, and I'm getting into technical terms, your bill of quantities saying what your building will require more than 6.5. If you can show where you're going to find a shortfall, mm -hmm. yeah, man, we will work out something with you. Bill of quantities. I did a video with a quantity surveyor. 
So I could just yeah. link that for persons who are watching <laughs> who are not so familiar with quantity surveying and what a bill of quantity is that Mr. Burbit just mentioned. Which is pretty much an estimate as to what you're doing and how much it will cost, cost. how much material it will take, right. and how much all this material will cost for you to build what you want to build. In a yes. notion, that is what it is. Yes. All right. so a quick question, though, as it relates to that, in terms of the application process for both the land loan and the cluster program, from start mm -hmm. to finish, is can you give an estimated timeline that you have? The estimated timeline, are, all right. So NHT has what we call same day loan approval. Mm -hmm. So if it is that you come in and you bring in all the documentation, Mm -hmm. and everything is in order. We can approve your loan that day. The mortgage process itself, though, mm -hmm. uh, has different moving parts. You may you start the process at NHD, but the NHT has to interact with NLA. NHD has to interact with the stamp office. It has to interact with Titus office. It has to interact with other agencies of government. Mm -hmm. So the whole mortgage process generally between when you, you start and complete, generally takes about 90 days, no hiccups, 90 to 120 days, no hiccups. Um, can be sooner if all your documents are in order and you know when the NHT says, okay, bring in this or you need, you bring in these, this checklist of documents have these 10 things you need to bring in. You don't bring in eight, and then wonder why the loan uh, takes so long to process. You need mm -hmm. to bring in, you know, everything. And I everything. know that, that sometimes I need to ensure that I manage the expectation of persons where that is concerned. Those 90 days to 120 days assume that everything is in order. Mm -hmm. And you, you provide the documents as requested on a timely basis. And you play your part in terms of furnishing the NHD with the proper documentation. Because the process is, as I mentioned, it's not just at NHD alone. Right. We have to also interact with the titles office. We have to also interact with the stamp office and, you know, mm -hmm. other agents of government. If you're doing construction, you have to ensure that you're, 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 you have your building plan from the parish council that is approved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't just decide, get up to there and say, oh, mega build. build. No. no. <laughs> you, you, you have to build um, according to a building mm -hmm. plan that be approved by a municipal corporation. So different loan types may have different requirements. Mm -hmm. And it's a speed at which the mortgage is able, or the prospective mortgage is able to, 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 to furnish the NHT with all the checklist requirements. The sooner we're able to, to, to do that processing for you. So it's up to the NHT to process it. But yes, you have a big part to play in terms of submitting your documents on time and mm -hmm. making sure the documents are correct and are in order. That's good. So for persons who are listening, you are doing the process or going through the process, ensure that you have all your documents in order, completed properly and submitted within time to ensure that it is done within that 90 to 120 days. That's what, three to four months? Three to four months, yes. So is there a case where you've had persons going over the 120? Is there any legal implications for that? There, there are legal implications because um, it's a legal process. Okay. So um, you would have signed what we call a sale agreement that says you, hmm. you're you committing to complete this process within this specific um, timeline. But I know that um, vendors who, who, in the instance where you're buying, vendors are, are if something genuinely happens, you can always reach out to the vendor and say, hey, I'm having this challenge. Give me a little bit more time and they'll probably give you an additional 30 days or whatever. But uh, mm -hmm. it cannot be a long drawn or protract right. protracted period because there's uncertainty. So because remember, it, it's the, 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 the sale process involves not just the, 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 the mortgages deposit, and mm -hmm. the mortgage um, fees that they're paying. Mm -hmm. There are some fees legally that the vendor must also pay. Mm -hmm. So you have to see from the vendor's side that the vendor is not paying for the transfer to be done and all of those other things and only to hear that, oh, the mortgage falls through and mm -hmm. you're not able to, they would have spent their money, money. Mm -hmm. which is why the deposit is sometimes important. 
Mm -hmm. um, why, why vendors require a five or 10% deposit because there are some fees that must be paid by the vendor. And imagine being a vendor and putting your money in it. And then halfway through the process, you get a call that say, yo, brother, I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to carry this again. Uh -huh. And the vendor's money is tied up in a process you're no longer interested in, which mm -hmm. is why I deposit. And I know sometimes persons say, why may I pay deposit? You're wicked. I may have to find 10% deposit. It's just the legal it's process. It's a surety. <laughs> and it's a surety. And it's yes. your commitment to the vendor oh, that right. hey, I'm in this and I'm in this to see this through to completion. Mm -hmm. Shows that you're serious. Very well. As Very some well. persons might, you know, frown up on it or may struggle to get it, but it's a surety that you are interested and you are serious. About that's right you are doing you're quite right yes all right so i think the next two questions i have on the list here you would have answered them but just to ensure that the persons who provided me with these questions to ensure you hear your question and know that it was answered it says what if i already have land explain the build and own land um process and you did touch a little bit on that Mm -hmm. So you can get your full NHD loan amount up to 6.5 million right. to do construction. Once there's land, once there's a registered title for it, it doesn't have to be in your name. The title holder can write and say, I'm giving Sharika permission to do construction on this property, on this piece of land. That's fine for the NHD. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make the, the loan available to you. Of course, you have to make the title available to the NHD. So the NHG can register its interest and its security on it. Um, well, its interest on the security being, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, the title must be made available. Mm -hmm. um, if, if there's no title, the NHG has um, different programs that can assist you in terms of like, having that registered mm -hmm. um, and provide the financing as well. The good thing about build on own land too is that you get a 12 month period before your first mortgage payment is due oh. Oh. so you <laughs> so you so between when you you the first disbursement you have 12 months before your first mortgage payment is due and you can understand why we do that because it's construction mm -hmm. you probably may be paying rent somewhere else mm -hmm. and not the place isn't moving ready so we give you 12 months to do your construction before your first mortgage payment is due. so you so live that's rent a free sweet. you live rent free mortgage free for one year <laughs> that's right. one full year that's awesome <laughs> that is awesome so i hope persons out there you have your land use it up don't just have it sitting down there you can go to nht get a bill on online loan you get the money to do your construction, you will be living in that house for one year. Not one month, you know. One year mortgage free. That's just awesome. That is yes. just awesome. All right. So this will lead into, I think, oh, we have three questions to go. You would have touched on home grant as it relates mm -hmm. to the persons with disability and the free money that they will get. Is there any other grant that you have for any other categories of contributors? Uh, no, just the, just a home grant for the low income, low, the lowest income band, mm -hmm. and the um, the disability grant at, at okay. this point in time. Okay. Yes, only those two grants at this time. Okay. All right. So for those persons, as was said before, if you are a low income earner, or if you're a person with a disability or your parents of a child with a disability, the NHT does provide you with a home grant. So you can contact the NHT to find out how you can benefit from that grant. All right. So we're going to. All right, Mr. Burbick. So uh, my next question to you is the CRTD. And I think that's contribution refund how, how you break it down refund on, towards, de towards deposit yes you, you got it <laughs> you got it yes and you break that down for us what is it 
All right, so CRT, the contribution refunds towards deposit, as you rightfully um, indicated. Um, it's, it's let, me, let me backtrack a little, let me start at the beginning. So individual makes contribution or contrib makes their contributions to the NHD or employers made their contribution on the individual's behalf to the NHD. And these become eligible for a refund. The NHD holds them, in, in, holds them for a period of seven years and they become eligible for a refund in the eighth year. Mm -hmm. So every year the NHD refunds a year at a time. So in this year, 2021, for example, we would be refunding contributions made in 2013. So under normal circumstances, an individual would only be able to get 2013 and the years prior. Mm -hmm. We won't go beyond that. However, if the individual is buying a house, mm -hmm. the NHD makes 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, we'll keep 2020, mm -hmm. um, but we'll make up to six years available okay. to you to assist with the different costs that are associated with the purchase. Mm -hmm. So it can be used to help with your deposit. Mm -hmm. It can be used to assist with the legal fees. There are some reports. I know you probably would have taken our your, your subscribers through this, the surveyors ID and valuation reports that they need to get done mm -hmm. as part of the sale process and mm -hmm. those costs. So it can be used to offset any of those um, mm -hmm. costs associated with the purchase of a house. And in the case where you're doing um, construction, mm -hmm. one of the requirements is that property taxes must be up to date. And mm -hmm. in that case, the NHT will assist, um, will help um, allow you to use the CRTD to assist with that as well and some other costs associated with construction, again, as it relates to fees, etc. So it really is the NHD making your refunds not yet due, mm -hmm. available to you ahead of time to assist mm -hmm. with the costs. And we do that because we understand that many times through the NHD or through other mortgage institutions jointly, individuals are able to secure the necessary 95 or 100% financing as the case may be that they need. Right. But then they start the process and then they never remember that you have to pay the lawyer to right. you, have, you have these fees associated with it. And that, 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 that's just our way of contributing to the sale process, making it a little bit smoother for you. Um, so, you know, assisting with some of those fees and monies that you have to find upfront as part of the purchase. So some persons always ask me that, what is the catch? There's only one <laughs> catch. What's that? You get your CRTD this year. Mm -hmm. Next year, when NHT is refunding 2014, you can't get no refund. You'd be surprised how people still apply, Sharika, even though <laughs> they know that they get it already. People still apply and then call and say, Oh, I haven't gotten any refund and I apply from January 1, midnight, and other people who apply get already. I mean, I get, Sir, ma'am, you got it already. Right. You can't get it twice. That's the only the, the thing, the only, the, the only back catch. Right. And, and, and really and truly, if you come into the office and you're doing it as a process, uh, as, a, as a process, they may refer to it as a CRTD loan. Mm -hmm. And I know some persons sometimes go, what, is this an additional loan? No, it's mm -hmm. not really. Because what really happens is that as the refunds become due, mm -hmm. it you know, goes over and pays off that portion mm -hmm. um, that, that is due. So it really is just an accounting principle for us on the inside to refer to it as a loan, because truly that's what we're doing. It's not okay. yet due, so we're giving it to you ahead of time, which means we're lending you. Mm -hmm. So really and truly it's just for processing purposes. It's not any additional amounts that you'll have to pay. Mm -hmm. Once those refunds become due, they are used to offset the CRTD that would have been made available to you ahead of time. Okay, so on the point of refund though, so for persons who use the CRTD to purchase their home, um, for those years, those six years, when it's due for them to get refund that day, they can't get those years again because you would have used it. So they have to wait until those six years. So you said you would have started 2013. So when those, those persons cannot get a refund until the end of like 2021. So when you reach 2021, before those persons will be eligible to get refund. refund. That's correct? Right. That's correct. That's okay. correct. Okay. So for persons who would have taken refunds in the year 
what it was before 2013 and now want this CRTD, they can still access that, that CRTD from 2013. It would not be a problem because it would have- would been not be a problem. No, okay. because we, we, it assumes that an individual takes their refund on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So you take what is due. So it really only speaks to what is not yet due, which oh. would be the year to come and for mm -hmm. the six years going forward. Okay. Yes. Okay, beautiful. So it won't cause a problem. No, no. So in terms of the CRTD, how do I apply for that to assist with my deposits? So you, say you for instance, I see the property now. Sorry about that. I see the property now and they mm -hmm. are taking deposits now. How do I, you know, ensure that I can get the money? Okay, you have to start the process. That's one. Mm -hmm. So if it is that it's an open market purchase, you would have had to um, start bringing in your documents to the NHG, one of them being an important one being your sale agreement, you would have had to start the loan process. Because what we don't want to happen is that we make the CRTD available to you and you change your mind and decide, say, you're not about to buy a house and you're not giving back the refund, mm -hmm. which will lend to you in faith that mm -hmm. you're actually going to purchase going a home. Yes. So, it, 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 you, you can indicate that loan application that you intend to use this. Mm -hmm. And so the different calculations can be factored in as to how much you will actually borrow. Mm -hmm. But it will be made available to you having started the loan application process, mm -hmm. meaning you would have had your sale agreement and you would have at least made the difference of the deposit. So let's say you have 200,000 in CRTD. Mm -hmm. it's, um, and, and, and the 10% deposit that is required is, is $1 million. Mm -hmm. You would have to bring in your receipt to say, okay, here's the 800,000 I've paid over to the vendor and mm -hmm. I need the 200,000 I have in CRTD to mm -hmm. add to, to satisfy the full 10% deposit. Mm -hmm. So it's not done before the process. Mm -hmm. But indicate at the time you come in to do the loan that you're going to be using your CRTD and having submitted, as I said, those preliminary documents, your sale agreement, the receipt for the difference, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. then the NHL will make it available to you. And it's a similar arrangement with the JFM program. When you go into the partner institution, do indicate to them that you intend to use this amount as well, your CRTD as well, to assist with the sale or the purchase as the case may be. Okay, so can I call to find out how much money I have in my CRTD? You don't have to. The NHG has a mobile app. Okay. <laughs> the NHG mobile has a app. mobile app. Okay. Yes, yeah, so when you log into that mobile app, actually, it shows you um, up to 10 years of contribution data. Mm -hmm. um, so it will show you included in that would be all 10 years uh, amount of contributions that the NHG has received for you. Mm -hmm. So it will tell you how much we have for you for 40, 2014, 15, 16, so forth. So mm -hmm. you can just add it up yourself and you will know just exactly how much I have already in CRTD. So you can better calculate, okay, what my shortfall is, mm -hmm. or I'm going to use the deposit out of pocket uh -huh. out of savings and then i'm going to use the crtd to do the, the survey as id the legal fees the valuation report that kind of thing but you can go to the mobile app and mm -hmm. it will tell you so you know exactly how much you have ahead of time okay again for those persons who are not so tech savvy how can i know also if you're not so tech savvy um you can you can always um give us your your your, your pertinent data, your, your NIS, your TRN, um, and, and reach out to us and let us know. Um, we would prefer not, I must say, we would prefer not to give that information over the phone. Okay. But um, given, yeah, we want to ensure that we're talking to Dwayne. Security not, reasons, right. Yeah. But we understand though that during this period, um, where face-to-face contact is really limited to at the NHG, we only limit that currently to if you're making a payment mm -hmm. or if you're coming in to sign. So we even start the loan processing via email now. Mm -hmm. So you only have to come in one time to do your loan interview and to sign. You don't have to come to NHG with every document every okay. time. Okay, beautiful. But but um, in this case, we 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 
talk to us. <laughs> we'll see how we can work around it. We okay. have a, an email indemnity form. So it could be just a matter of sending that to you. So we can associate a, a, a single email account to the individual. And mm -hmm. once that individual does the necessary verification mm -hmm. to indemnify that email account, then that frees up the NHD legally to be able to start doing business with that identified registered account um, from the individual. So we can work out something. Can work it out. All right, beautiful. Yeah. So for persons out there who wants to know how much money you have available to you to use from the CRTD, as was said, you can download the app on your phone. You can just use it from the comfort of your home and you can know how much money you have available to you. If you are not so tech savvy, you can contact the NHT and they will walk you through the process to ensure that you are verified and that your information is secured before they disclose that kind of information. So contact the NHT if you are in doubt or if you're not so tech savvy and you want to get that information. Um, just a quick question too on the CRTD. Um, I know of persons who would have um, paid their deposit out of pocket, but would want that money to use for closing fee. Is that um, available? Yeah, man, that's, that's available. It's available for that. Any of the, the costs associated, as oh. I mentioned, to do the reports, to do closing okay. costs, legal fees. Yes, you can use it for those as well. Okay. And is there a timeline? that you're working with that persons need to submit these documents and then you will hear from us within X time and you will get this, the, the money dispersed within X time. Um, from what I remember off the top of my head, I believe it's a 15 day processing time that we work with between when you put in the application for it and, and, and when we um, disperse that, that amount. So 15 days. Okay. All right. So I think we're almost at the end of our interview. And the final question that I have for you, Mr. Burbick, which you would have sure. initially touched on a little bit, because we know that we are in a global pandemic right now, and face-to-face -face interaction in some business transaction is now limited. So for persons out there who would want certain information, I know you would have mentioned earlier that you can use the mortgage calculator, and know you'd have mentioned that you can use your app. So that's one way that persons can get the necessary information that they need from the NHD or also you can call and you can email. But are there any other provisions that you have in place given COVID that you are taken that persons need to be aware of? The, the okay. main... Go, go ahead. ahead. You, you go ahead. Right, I was just adding to what I was saying. How can persons come about to ascertain like varying status um, as it relates to NHD and you know their personal business that they want to be done? Mm -hmm. They can they can always email our customer contact center at wecare at nht.gov.jm. You mm -hmm. can always give us a call 929-6500. We actually have a branch office in every parish. So you can always reach out to us there as well. We're on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I indicated, as it relates to doing some of the transactions and some of the businesses um, of, 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 of the NHT, we, we've moved those services online. So even your loan processing, we'll start the loan process with you via email. Mm -hmm. you submit those documents. We have a Dropbox that we will also share with you so you can put information right. there and we can, you know, start the process there to mm -hmm. reduce that face-to-face -face, um, um, contact. So given COVID, we've moved some of our services online, especially as it relates to some of our loan processing that we we start most of it um, via, via email or if individuals can um, fax in some information and then we'll just take the, 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 the verified um, copies when they come in. We'll ask them just to come in once. Right. Just once. You don't have to make many trips to and from the NHD. You'll just come in once to mm -hmm. sign. And you know that's important because it's a legal process and it's a very important process. So we have to ensure that um, even though we do business 
electronically for some right. parts of the way at, at the point you want to see who Dwayne really is right. and who Sharika really is and let them put pen to paper right. so down the road they don't hear that oh it wasn't Dwayne or it wasn't Sharika mm -hmm. so I know some customers say but why we still have to come in you can take electronic signatures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a very important legal um, process that whole mm -hmm. homeowner and, and, and that buying processes so we just ask you to come in just once just right. once to do you know the necessary signing otherwise individuals can make their request for eligibility letter via we care at nht.gov.jm and we are on all socials we have a branch office in every parish and we have a great customer contact center that you can always reach out to 929-6500 or 1888 call nht all right, so I will be leaving all those social media um, taglines down below and the contact details down below. So if you need to get a hold of the NHT, you know the numbers to call, you know the mediums that you can use, so you have no excuse. So at none this at point, none at all, Mr. Burby, none at all. So at this point, I just want to say thank you. Mr. Burbick, for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. I know you had a lot doing today and you took the time out to sit with us here and Josh Sharika to explain this very important process of home ownership. And I just want to say again, for probably the millionth and one time, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for being here Thanks. and sharing all of this information with us. And thanks very much for having me as well. And I hope your, your subscribers will do indeed find the information useful as they engage on their different home ownership goals. Thanks again. Thank you too. And I know they will find it to be very informative. So thank you again. And until then, guys, I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to like if you have not done so already. What took you so long? And don't forget to subscribe and become a member of the family. Until then, I will see you all in my next video. Do take care. Bye.